time, Nvidia and AMD have been the sole prominent players in the GPU game, but there are some notable differences between the GPUs that these two companies produce. Even though Nvidia was the indisputable champion, especially in the high end, AMD is making a slow and steady comeback to the GPU scene. So what do we find once we strip away the marketing and the fancy labels? Let's find out. Performance is the first thing that most of us think of when we think about graphics cards, obviously. So how do AMD and Nvidia GPUs fare in the benchmarks? Well, while we can't generalize performance across the board because there are so many GPUs and different graphics card models out there, we can definitely see how they fare overall in certain price ranges. In the low end and the mid range, the AMD and Nvidia graphics cards are on fairly even terms, though the former does tend to offer better value for your money in most cases. AMD GPUs usually offer better performance without being significantly more expensive than Nvidia models, and sometimes they're actually cheaper. However, as we move into the high-end territory, AMD has little to no foothold here. Their Vega 56 and Vega 64 GPUs are seldom a cost-effective solution due to their pricing, so Nvidia essentially has a monopoly here, at least for now. For the moment, AMD's RX 500 series graphics cards present great value and the beefier RX 580 and the RX 590 models are actually quite competent even when it comes to QHD gaming. However, if you're looking for some serious performance in QHD or have your sights set on 4K already, Nvidia is really the only way to go. Of course, the situation might change in the near future since there are some more affordable Nvidia RTX cards on the way, and not to mention AMD's upcoming 7 nanometer Navi GPUs that should hopefully present some high-end competition. Of course, we can't discuss whether Nvidia or AMD is better without taking a look at how they stack up when it comes to hardware. Nvidia's GPU architectures are generally more advanced and better optimized, so they usually fare better when it comes to computing tasks. They generate less heat and have lower TDP. AMD mostly closes the gap through raw power, so their Polaris-based cards tend to run hotter and have a higher TDP than their Nvidia counterparts do. At the moment, the Polaris lineup consists predominantly of 14 nanometer GPUs, while the latest RX 590 is the only 12 nanometer one in the bunch. As for Nvidia, their current Turing lineup includes only 12 nanometer GPUs for now. The gap is closing rapidly, and as we've already mentioned, the upcoming AMD Navi GPUs will be made using the 7 nanometer process, so it will be quite interesting to see how Nvidia handles the competition. Both Nvidia and AMD GPUs come with their own respective drivers and control panels. There really isn't much to say about the drivers since both companies release new and stable drivers fairly regularly. Though Nvidia does have a slightly better track record in this department, both when it comes to updates and in making the most out of their hardware. As for the Nvidia control panel and AMD control center, there are no significant differences in functionality between the two. Frankly, the biggest difference is in the aesthetics department, as AMD's control center has a sleek and modern look, all the while Nvidia's control panel still looks like it's stuck in the Windows XP era. Nevertheless, the two are on relatively even terms when it comes to software features, though what you should definitely be paying the most attention to are their adaptive sync technologies. Active Sync becomes a much better alternative. Why? Well, while VSync imposes a hard cap on your frame rate in order to avoid the display and the GPU falling out of sync, thus preventing a nasty looking screen tearing, it can also cause significant stutter and input lag. Adaptive Sync solves the problem by adapting the refresh rate of the display to the frame rate, thus keeping them in sync even with the inevitable frame rate fluctuations. Now, both Nvidia and AMD have their own takes on Adaptive Sync, and those are the G-Sync and the FreeSync, respectively. We'll be comparing these two more thoroughly in the future, but for now, here's the gist of it. FreeSync can be found in monitors across all price ranges since it's cheaper to implement, though it only works in frame rate range that is specified by the monitor manufacturer. When it comes to G-Sync, it is more expensive to implement since it can only work with Nvidia's proprietary scalar modules. And while this increase in pricing doesn't make G-Sync monitors quite as budget-friendly as FreeSync ones can be, Nvidia's close involvement and strict quality control ensures that G-Sync is implemented properly. There are no specific supportive frame rate 
ranges, and what's more, G-Sync goes beyond mere adaptive sync. It also offers some extra features such as motion blur reduction, ghosting reduction, and more. So in the end, FreeSync is a much better budget choice, which is quite fitting considering that AMD graphics cards are usually better budget solutions too. Still, G-Sync is objectively superior due to the strict quality control and the additional features that it offers, even though G-Sync monitors tend to be on the pricey side. In any case, FreeSync and G-Sync are only compatible with AMD and Nvidia GPUs respectively, so that's definitely something to keep in mind when shopping for a new GPU, at least if you intend on using a monitor with a refresh rate beyond the usual 60Hz. So with all that we've set in mind, which one of these two is better, Nvidia or AMD? Well, neither is inherently better. AMD is definitely the better option for low-end and most mid-range setups, and Nvidia is the only way to go with high-end setups. As such, the question of which of these two is better will largely come down to personal requirements and budget constraints. And there you have it, our take on the perennial question of which GPU manufacturer is better. They're both better than the other, just at different things. Of course, we'd like to hear what your thoughts on this matter are down in the comments. Just try and be nice to each other. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and maybe even click on the bell icon if you want to see more videos like this one. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few, and as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.